In examining the bicep tendon, again, it's important to keep the notch of the probe medially facing towards the patient. I'm going to maintain contact at all times with my hand on the patient using my second through fifth fingers to form a base on the patient's shoulder and almost pinching the probe between my two fingers. And it's fairly easy to identify the bicep which lies in the groove between the greater and lesser tuberosities. A helpful tip is to aim the probe both upwards and downwards until you get a nice image of the bicep tendon in its groove. On top of the bicep tendon lies the transverse ligament which covers the bicep tendon in its circular pattern. And here is a good image of the bicep tendon in its cross section. And if there are abnormalities you may see some increased black fluid surrounding the tendon and there's some normal physiologic fluid there but this is a normal bicep tendon. I'm going to follow the bicep tendon distally to examine if there's any pathology, which is a common place of bicep tears. Next, I'm going to go back to my initial starting point and find the bicep tendon between the greater and lesser tuberosities. I'm going to turn the probe in a longitudinal manner, again maintaining the notch of the probe upward. And what this is going to do is change my view from cross-sectional to longitudinal of the patient's bicep tendon. And a tendon tends to have a fibular pattern. And we can follow this tendon as it runs along the humerus distally, looking for any abnormalities until we begin to see the pectoralis tendon come in and insert here distally.